Hey, my name is Paul Motisi, and I'm here today with a tutorial on how to make tie-dye spirals from scratch in Photoshop. I got some great feedback on YouTube for my first video on how to make wood grain from scratch, and I thought this time let's try something a little more ambitious and a little more colorful. If you like what you see here, share, thumbs up, subscribe, whatever. Let's get started. When you're in Photoshop, you're going to create a new document. It's a 3840 square, 72 DPI. RGB color, 8-bit background color can be whatever. It's not going to matter. If you don't see the layers panel, hit F7. That should open it up. And once you're in there, you're going to create a new layer. And you're going to name that layer Fibers. Check that your color pickers are black and white. Order doesn't matter, really. You just want black and white. Go up to Filter, Render, Fibers and you're gonna get some black and white fibers. I have my variance set to 20 and my strength to 10. I don't like what's happening at the top on these filters, so I adjust that by Command T to transform, hold Option, Shift, and drag up. And that just lets me cut off what's going on there. I'm gonna hit Command J, and that's gonna duplicate the fibers layer. I'm gonna rename that layer Rays, and now I'm gonna to go to Filter, Distort, polar coordinates and it's going to be rectangular to polar and it's going to give us these rays and I'm going to command T again hold shift option and drag from the corner to scale proportionally to get rid of that stuff on the outside just to let you know we made those two layers and we're not going to use them until later on now we're going to do a gradient adjustment layer and for the gradient I have one set you want a rainbow for this um, something like this. First you want to convert this to a smart object so we can go back and make changes as we need to. Now I'm going to do this the wrong way just to show you what will happen when you use polar coordinates. If you go to polar coordinates again when it, the lines are horizontal like that you'll get these concentric circles which look cool but that's not what we're trying to achieve here so we're going to undo. We're going to double click on the smart object and now we can go in and change this smart object. Let's double click the gradient and change the angle to zero. So now we've got vertical lines. We save it and now it updates in our new document. Let's do polar coordinates again and now we get what we're looking for except for the fact that it's got that hard line. So go back to the smart object and we're going to option drag the red stop to the left. So it goes back to the, oh, if it snaps back, just regular drag it. It created a copy. It sometimes just snaps back. But we want the red to be back at the beginning as well. And you can adjust these other stops if you like, but hit OK. For now, save it again. I hit Command S. Switch back to the main document, do polar coordinates one more time, and you'll see that it's a nice smooth ray gradient all around except for the center which we'll fix with the gaussian blur i did like 15 or something cool so now that we've got that we're also going to distort twirl we're going to do an angle of 600 hit okay and we've already got this cool spiral thing that we're looking for go down to pixelate and crystallize and that'll give us some chunky, bleedy kind of shapes. I set mine at like 30 or 40, I think. Then we'll do some work with the minimum and maximum. I wish I could explain what these things do, but maximum sort of brings more white to the edges. And it's almost like the edges get like a screen blending mode or something. And then the minimum expands the dark edges and create something like a multiply blending mode that is the worst description you're going to get but <laughs> you can look it up on your own for this i set the radius on both of them to around 20 or 30 and then i set it to preserve roundness so i did mi maximum then minimum and now i'm going to go over to the stylized drop down click on oil paint and i'm going to use this to get some fibrous type textures and little organic shapes. Crank the stylization up, to, I did to like seven. You can bring the cleanliness down a little bit, let it get messy. 
I keep the scale around six and a half. The bristle detail can come down. And you do want to turn the lighting on because you can see it really brings out some shadows. Uh, but keep it low for now. We're going to add textures in other ways. I just think this is a nice little thing to kind of break up the chunkiness of the crystallize filter. Hit OK. And now we're going to blur that a little bit with the spin radial blur. And I just did a little bit of a blur there just to kind of soften it. Now we're going to open up the wave generator. So I have it set to three generators. The wavelength range is 300 to 500. My amplitude's between 1 and 100. And I cranked the scale all the way up. And I made sure that the wave type was set to triangle. And I'm doing this to kind of get these bleedy organic ripples, just like when you bunch the shirt up and it kind of has these wrinkles. It's not a perfect spiral. And then I'm going to render clouds on top of that. You think I just did that for no reason because it covers it up. But if you can edit the smart filter for clouds by clicking on that little icon to the right on the layers menu, you could set the blending mode of that filter. I set it to overlay blending mode with an opacity of about 50. And once we hit OK, we're going to select our rays layer that we made before and just move it up to the front. I'm going to select all with command A, copy with command C. And before I paste it, I'm just going to set the blending mode here to overlay and bring that down to about 20%. Adds a little more of that ripple and die bleed. Now I'm going to select the gradient fill layer here. I'm going to command D to make sure I'm deselected. Command J to duplicate the smart object. And I'm going to put a mask on that layer. Option click on that new mask square over there. And I'm going to paste in my rays. And... I'm going to soften all this up with Gaussian Blur. I'll set it to about uh, 10 or 20, whatever, something like that. And Radial Blur. Make sure it's Zoom. And I'll set about 20. Okay. And then we're going to boost up the curves. I want to have some white exposed in a predominantly black mask like that. That works. And we're going to hit OK. We're going to set the blending mode of that to linear burn. That gives us the dye bleed effect. Now we're going to make a new layer, paste the rays in again, reproduce the same effect. Gaussian blur, same type of thing. Radial blur, same type of thing there. And we're going to do the curves again. Now for this, instead of focusing on the dark and the dye bleed coming from the dark end, we're going to focus on bringing out some of the highlights, some of the spots that the dye didn't get to. So once you're happy with your star field looking thing here, we're going to set the blending mode on this layer here to color dodge. And that's going to make it look like you had some white areas, but it had a little bit of bleed in those white areas. I think that creates a cool effect, but it's in line with our other ones. So command T and just uh, shift rotate and there you go now you got some darker bleed and some less exposed areas you can bring down the fill on that i think i did like 60 or 50 or something it's looking pretty good so far i like what's happening here now the fibers layer we're going to do this move this up to the front and set that to overlay and bring down the opacity on that as well so now that's like the fibers of uh, the cloth that it's on right now, unlink on the second one, the duplicate, the one that's the linear burn, unlink it from the mask and scale transform the actual layer itself just a little bit and you'll get even more of a bit of a bleed effect. Now the red will bleed further into the orange and the green will bleed further out into the blue. You can kind of see the colors start escaping the area that they're in. You should link that back up before you uh, finish it up by clicking that lock in between the mask and the content. And what's neat about this effect is if you want to change the colors about any of any point, I'm going back to the smart object and making some just simpler tie-dye save it, and it'll update in the new document. And the heavy lifting is done, so I'm going to undo that. 
Once I'm happy with what I have, I like to make a duplicate and flatten it all. So I'm going to command control shift E and that makes a flattened copy of the entire document. And now that I have this, I like to open my camera raw and start manipulating the image in the way that I choose. This is entirely optional. This is just what I like to do. So I like to boost my clarity, smooth out my texture, suck out some of the vibrance, because if it were a photograph of tie-dye, I feel like it wouldn't be like RGB bright. I like to add some noise, a little bit of grain, and anything else you like to do to make this image look the way that you see fit. It's a little bit of my cheat there. And then I go into transform and do a distort transform and kind of just shift the angle so it's not so uh, perfect of an angle. And because it's tie-dye, I think you can kind of get away with a little bit of distortion and making it look really great. I'm pretty happy with my document. I hope you're happy with what you did. Uh, if you have any questions for me or anything you want to see in the future from me, please let me know. I'm really getting into doing this Photoshop tutorial thing, and any feedback you have is super instrumental in helping me do more. So thanks for checking it out. If you like what you saw, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.